You ever open a book with full motivation, and 12 minutes later you're deep into cat videos or checking what your cousin had for lunch? It's not that you're lazy or not smart. It's because your brain's been trained to find studying boring. But here's the crazy part. You can train it back. Yes, you can actually get addicted to studying, the same way people get addicted to scrolling. Let me explain how it works. Your brain is always chasing dopamine, the chemical behind motivation, pleasure, craving. Scroll on TikTok? Dopamine? Open a notification? Dopamine. Even anticipating something interesting? Dopamine. The problem is, social media hijacks your dopamine system. Every swipe gives your brain a shiny new reward. No effort, no thinking. Just dopamine hits. Your brain starts getting used to instant pleasure. So when it sees a textbook, something slow, effort-heavy, with delayed rewards, it says, nope, it's not that you can't focus. It's that your brain has redefined what feels worth focusing on. Let's flip this. What if you could hack your dopamine so that studying feels as rewarding as scrolling? Here's what most people get wrong. They try to force themselves to study while their brain is screaming for stimulation. It's like trying to eat salad while the smell of fries is right in your face. So the trick isn't to push harder. It's to change the environment inside your brain. There are two phases to this transformation. Reset the baseline. Rewire the reward. Do both. And studying becomes weirdly satisfying. Right now, your brain is flooded with high-intensity input. That's why low-stimulation activities feel dead. To fix this, you need a mini-dopamine detox. Nothing extreme. No need to disappear into a forest and meditate for 10 hours a day. Here's what works. 15 minutes a day of no input time. Just sit. Walk. Stare at the ceiling. No music. No phone. No distractions. Avoid multitasking. Don't study with YouTube open. Reduce screen time gradually. Even 30-minute chunks away from your phone help. The first three days will suck. You'll feel restless, bored, even anxious. But that's your brain rebalancing. After a few days, you'll notice something weird. Silence starts feeling peaceful. Reading doesn't feel like a chore anymore. You're regaining sensitivity to normal dopamine levels. That's the foundation. Once your baseline is reset, it's time to make studying feel good. Here's how to train your brain to crave study sessions. Use micro rewards. After every section or problem, give yourself a check mark, a star, a sip of coffee, something small but satisfying. Make progress visible. Track what you complete. Seeing a growing list taps into your brain's reward system. Use the Pomodoro technique. 25 minutes of work, 5 minutes break. Your brain likes short sprints, not marathons. Verbalize what you're learning. Pretend you're teaching it to a 10-year-old. Explaining boosts dopamine through mastery. Switch formats. Use diagrams, mind maps, videos, practice questions. Variety keeps your brain engaged. Make emotional connections. Studying psychology? Think about how it relates to your relationships. Learning history? Imagine living in that time. Emotional relevance boosts memory. Every time your brain feels a tiny win, it reinforces the habit. Repeat that cycle, and you're conditioning a new addiction. There's a point where your brain flips. You're on a break, and instead of reaching for your phone, you reach for your notes. Not because you have to, because your brain sees it as rewarding. I've seen this happen with students who thought they were hopeless. They weren't. They just never learned to use their brain's natural wiring. Studying doesn't have to be miserable. It can literally become something you crave. So here's your challenge. Today, try 15 minutes of doing nothing. Just sit in silence. Tomorrow, do one 25-minute focused study session with a small reward after. Track how you feel after a week. You'll be surprised your brain isn't broken. It's just trained, and you can train it back. Getting addicted to studying isn't some myth. It's neuroscience. And it's simple. Actually, 